Today we are visiting the campus of Western Kentucky University. I wanted to show you guys an old Civil War fort that the university campus is actually built on top of. This video is intended to kind of help to preserve some of the remaining elements of the forts. As you are going to see, there is a significant portions of this fort that are uh, that have basically been consumed by campus, by the construction of the buildings, by renovation of the buildings. And I wanted to try to preserve as much of the remaining areas of the fort as possible. You can see here that I am driving around the campus, that we're driving around the campus just to kind of show you a little bit about the layout of how this area is. It's very important to see the layout to better understand some of the way that the campus is set up that the fort was set up you can kind of see the way some of the old stones and things like that were built of course coming down this hill uh, you can tell that this was certainly a great area for a fort uh, it was very high on the hill it was an area to where you could easily see for a long distance and uh, of course this area the wku the campus uh, one of the names of it is, of course, the hill. That's one of the names of this, uh, what people mostly will call this area. Uh, WKU students are called hilltoppers, and you know, and it all plays into the uh, where this university is set. This photo was from around 1920. Behind the couple is Van Meter Hall setting up on the hill. The road behind them is now part of Big Red Way, which we were just driving down a moment ago. Uh, this is a shot of the Kentucky Museum, and of course this is as we are walking up Big Red Way. Now, one of the things about this area, and Bowling Green in particular, is it was kind of the unofficial capital of the Confederacy. While this plaque has been removed, or at least I did not see it, here is a photo of a historic plaque that, that talks about that. And of course, when the there was a new dorm built back a few years ago, and this plaque was taken down at the time, I think that there were some political implications, some just basically people hating anything to do with the Confederacy or anything like that. Out in front of the Kentucky Museum is a statue dedicated to, of course, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the uh, Kentucky Museum is a very good place if you want to see a lot of the history in the area. It's very similar to the uh, the uh, museum, the Southern Kentucky Cultural Center that I did video be of before. And here we are continuing our walk up Big Red Way. And Van Meter is on top there. I'm actually going to show you a couple of old photos that I was able to find online that kind of show just a little bit about this area. Now, this Civil War fort, this fort that is built on top of the hill, was it had two different names. Uh, the Unionists uh, called it the uh, called it Fort Lytle, and the Southerners called it Fort Johnson and I will show you a couple of plaques that are on top of the hill just kind of talks a little bit about that. Now I'm going to show you here an old photo dating from the early 1900s. This was an old postcard that I was able to find online that kind of depicts Van Meter Hall back during that period. Here is an aerial map of the campus again from the early 1900s. That center Van Meter Hall is on the right side of that, on, kind of on the bottom right. Now, this is the building that is Van Meter Hall. And there is a very particular reason that we're going to talk about Van Meter Hall start, starting. Uh, that's where we're going to be in, in our journey. Now this is the fountain kind of in front of Van Meter Hall or at least one of them up on top of the hill. Uh, this is just a very nice area, very decorative. It is just a very nice place for photography, for photos or anything like that and you can kind of see the lay of the land, just how high up we are. You can see for a great distance and of course back in the 1860s the landscape was certainly much different. Now we're coming up the steps to the fountain that is directly in front of Van Meter Hall. You can see Van Meter Hall on the right and of course again we see just how high we are and how much of the area that can be seen from this perspective. 
and when we look in any direction from top of the hill, I mean, it's just amazing how far you can see. Uh, and we're going up the steps now of Van Meter Hall. Of course, the steps, the Van Meter was one of the earliest buildings constructed on the campus, and it is directly on top of, uh, you know, what was the fort, uh, you know, where that one corner of the fort was. Uh, we're going to be going here and just to show you kind of the perspective again from just how high up we are. Uh, we can see from a very great distance from this area. On a plaque behind Van Meter and Gordon Wilson, there is some old photos. Now, the first one here is from 1898, and this shows the area after, uh, you know, well before the construction of the university. I believe that they actually, this area had been used basically for agriculture prior to the construction of the university. And you can see the layout of the hill. You can see the layout of the fort of how or the remains of the fort from that time. And it just kind of gives you just a little bit better perspective of the area uh, when we go through looking around at some of the way that it is laid out. Now, you're going to see some additional photos here in just a moment that show the construction or i should say after the construction of some of the buildings on campus and again van meter hall is one of the first buildings that was constructed in this area it was used for a time as the university chapel uh, you know there's just a lot of history surrounding this entire university and it all relates back to uh, you know when it was founded and there's just much more that we can cover in a single video much more about the history of WKU here we can see in this photo again from the early 1900s we can kind of see how the layout of the area was then uh, you can still see some of the remains of the fort and I was unable to find these photos online. These are actually photos that I took of the plaque that is behind Van Meter and Gordon Wilson, as I had mentioned earlier. And again, I wanted to include them to kind of help to preserve a little bit more of the history of this area. You know, the top of the hill, it's a very unique place. It's a very interesting place to see, especially when you bring into the, you know, all of the history surrounding this area. You know, Bowling Green has a lot of Civil War significance, a lot of Civil War history. Uh, you know, it was this fort was controlled by the Confederacy for a while, and then, of course, eventually the Union moved in and overtook the fort. Now, there were nece not necessarily any major conflicts or major battles, but it was a, uh, you know, a part of the Civil War. We can see here this photo here. We can see Van Meter Hall in this photo in the early 1900s. Uh, you know, and then still you can kind of see the layout of the land and just to kind of point out how this area has been so heavily influenced just by the uh, the land, the layout of the land, and, uh, you know, and just the history that surrounds it. It's just amazing how much history there is that surrounds this area. When I first started trying to do some research for this, it's a rabbit hole that you could go down for a significant long time. Uh, we could spend just hours and hours talking about the history of just one or two of the buildings on this campus and in this area and uh, the things that, uh, you know, the roles that they've played over the years. Now what we're going to do now, and you'll see why I wanted to begin at Van Meter Hall, we're going to walk around behind the building and I want you to look at some of the layout of the land. You can still see how it kind of rolls around, how it kind of uh, still drops, and you're actually going to see a few of the remaining stones from the fort, from the Civil War fort era. Uh, you can see right over here, you can see how the sidewalk was cut. There are some stones that still remain from that era, kind of to the left, and as we go on up, uh, you can see it, several more. Uh, this whole area, uh, right there to the right, you can kind of see in the center of the screen some of the remaining rocks from the original fort. 
and uh, it, it's just a very interesting to see this and that's why I kind of wanted to preserve some of this as much as possible because as time uh, passes as these buildings are renovated and that sort of thing it definitely impacts the way that uh, the typography of this land of how things look as far as what remains and now what we're actually about to do is go into the trenches one of the trenches from that fort there is a small section of it left you can see some of the stones here in front of me and this area here is uh, really getting into the heart of the fort uh, you can see as we go through here I'm going to show you a couple of old photos from when uh, early in the early part of uh, the century in the 20th century that the bridge that we're about to see in a few moments is called the Kissing Bridge and it was originally built by I believe some of the students along with the help of a professor and of course uh, the newer version of that bridge you can see it up ahead is something that has you know, been part of the university for a significant long time uh, I think in their archives they do have a lot more of the information about this bridge but you can see uh, literally inside the trenches the remain of the Civil War fort uh, you can see over to the right to the left and as we walk through I mean there were troops that were certainly stationed here we're literally walking the footsteps of Civil War veterans you can see an old photo I believe from the 1920s of the Kissing Bridge uh, when it was constructed originally and of course the newer version uh, that is put in its place uh, it, it, just to kind of bring some of the historical uh, perspective to this area as part of the university as part of uh, you know some of the things that happened here and of course we continue on going underneath this bridge it is very popular to see people do photos there has been wedding photos done uh, in this area it's just a very nice area again we can see more of the layout more of the uh, leftover more of the remains This is a view from on top of the bridge looking down into the trenches. In 1861, Bowling Green was a small county of about 2,500 residents. Although 65 miles north of Nashville, it was considered as an outpost of that city and needed to be well fortified by the Confederates. General Johnson made Bowling Green his headquarters and took charge of the troops there. The Confederate command rightly felt that its greatest danger at Bowling Green lay from the Union Army stationed on the Green River north of Mumfordville. To be safe from capture, Johnson, soon after Buckner's arrival, began the fort on what is today called College Heights. Soon after the fall of Fort Henry, the, the Confederates began to evacuate Bowling Green. When it became evident that Fort Donelson would also fall, the remaining Confederates fled to Nashville. In its unfinished condition, the fort and all the remainder of the hill, after a long period of neglect, became the property of Professor Campbell, who had organized a stock company to fund a college for young women. Professor Campbell landscaped only a small fringe of the hill along 15th Street. In that area, he built a small home of his own and also erected a large three-story brick building which served as a dormitory and provided classrooms for the college he founded. One of the reasons why it's important to save history is because of the way that things change. Back behind me is the Garrett Conference Center and this building is actually going to be coming down as part of some of the work that the university is doing and along with that as buildings are uh, renovated as they are constructed and that sort of thing a lot of this landscape becomes that much more lost to history the college founded by professor campbell is known as potter college the board of regents for western state normal school wanted a new location for their college. Professor Campbell offered to sell the board, Potter College, his home, and the entire hill. The plaque located behind Gordon Wilson Hall reads Fort Albert Sidney Johnson. 
General Simon Bolivar Buckner occupied Bowling Green September 18, 1861. General Albert Sidney Johnson, commander of Confederate Army of the West, moved headquarters to Bowling Green October 28, 1861. He began the erection of this fort. General Johnson evacuated Bowling Green February 14, 1862 and started for Nashville. This ended Confederate control here. General Mitchell of the Union Army occupied Bowling Green February 15, 1862. Colonel Benjamin Harris, later President Harris, was one of the Union officers in command here. Union forces held the fort until the end of the war. Again, we're going to continue just walking around the campus to show you the way that some of this is laid out. You can see the way that the ground is here. You can kind of see the ridge line of where the fort originally stood. We're now coming around the front of, uh, this is going to be Gordon Wilson. Uh, again, this is one of the older buildings that is on campus. You can kind of see how the hill is the layout of the landscape and of course there's Van Meter Hall and again we're seeing just how high up that we are. Uh, we're now walking up in front of Gordon Wilson Hall of course along the sidewalk. Uh, we're going now in front of uh, towards Cherry Hall and you can see Cherry Hall there just to the left with a statue of Dr. Cherry. I uh, believe that the statue was erected in the early 1900s as well. The original founding of the school was in 1908 as, uh, uh, as history has shown. This, this, uh, this plaque, this statue of Dr. Cherry still stands as a monument to uh, the legacy of Dr. Cherry as well as to Western Kentucky University and its founding. I found an old photo from 1937, I believe, that shows the dedication ceremony of the statue for Dr. Cherry. And here we are behind the statue, uh, kind of from the perspective that that photo was taken on the steps of Cherry Hall. Again, you can kind of see straight in front of Dr. Cherry is a road that leads to the uh, historic downtown section of Bowling Green. If you're familiar with the area, straight down that road will take you down to Fountain Square Park uh, and that sort of thing. And of course we can see some of the early stonework that was done during uh, construction of Cherry Hall and that sort of thing. We're now coming around further around the front of Cherry Hall and uh, we see the uh, log cabin there on the right that is known as Faculty House. Uh, it was built by students back many years ago. Of course here is a shot from behind the Garrett Conference Center, the building that I had mentioned earlier that is going to be coming down uh, at some point in the future. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video, just to kind of show you uh, a little bit more of this area because as time goes by, uh, as more construction and renovation is done, certainly the fort will be lost to history for the most part. Uh, you can see there that is the renovation of Helm Library, which is going to become uh, the Commons, I believe is what uh, they're going to be calling that building. It's going to be a student center, have uh, some of the dining and that sort of thing. Uh, that was at one time where the uh, teams, the basketball teams, played basketball. Uh, but since then, it was uh, changed to a library, and now, of course, it's being changed again. And again, just to show you some of how the layout of the land is, you can still kind of see the remains of how the fort w was, just the way the embankments were. 
we're actually going to see some additional stones once we get to the top of this area and as I'd mentioned in my previous video on Fort Williams there's a lot of these forts a lot of the actions taken during the Civil War that get overlooked simply because they are not as much of a significant impact on that war as many believe however they are still a critical piece of our history and should be preserved we can see walking up through here some additional stones left over from the time of the fort now this area from what I've read online uh, as the college was being built years ago there was much of this area that was basically just left for the wild I mean it was basically just overtaken with brush with down trees and was just in very bad shape but as the university was built a lot of the area was cleaned up and certainly there was major impacts made uh, to this area and of course to the left is the Potter Hall which as we mentioned earlier it's kind of uh, that is where the dorm was for uh, the Potter College for when it, it was originally done it was a women's college and eventually became part of Western Kentucky University and we see more of the remaining stones coming down the sidewalk between Potter Hall and Van Meter Hall. Those were the steps that we'd walked up just previously. We're just coming down around the front. And I'm basically, again, just wanting to show you guys the layout of this and just to preserve it for history. Uh, and I know that if there's someone in the future that is watching this video, you probably have a million questions that I wish I could answer for you. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm just recording this from my perspective. Uh, I wish I knew what those questions may be, and I would try to dive a little more into them. I'm trying to think of what history may want to know about this area. Again, Potter College there on the left. Of course, it has gone through some changes over the years. It's more of an administrative building now uh, compared to it being a dorm in previous years. To the right is... The Weatherby administrative building that we're coming up and again we can kind of see the layout of the land how it slopes downward uh, you can see here again it's much steeper than the video is depicting I mean it's it's a pretty significant drop and we're coming down now a little further towards uh, where more of the bottom of the hill would be uh, of course, going in front of the Weatherby Administrative Building, they have been doing some work. They recently uh, demoed the old foundation building. And, of course, you can see some of the area there that was blocked off. Now we're walking up the sidewalk in front of the Weatherby Administrative Building. And we are going to go over to where uh, we're actually going to be going down the hill even further, kind of towards where the... Uh, uh, like Diddle Arena, that sort of area are. If any of you guys have ever been down there to any of the ball games, I'm sure that if you've ever heard of uh, WKU basketball, you've certainly heard of Diddle Arena. And as we come down through there, we see fine arts to the left. And we're just going to be strolling continuously down the hill. Uh, and more of the flatter part of the hill is down this way. And, of course, to the right, we see... Uh, the Gatton Academy, Schneider Hall, as it was once called. We see fine arts there on the left. And actually, that front area where fine arts is is where the uh, football uh, field used to be many years ago. We can also see uh, a lot more of the leftover stone from here. This kind of a part of the landscape of this area. But again, uh, you know, there have been changes over the years since the, uh, uh, since the time of the war. Uh, and, of course, we're walking now down further down the sidewalk, kind of coming around in front of the fine arts complex. Again, just showing the embankment. And, guys, that's basically what I wanted to do in this video was just to try to preserve a little bit about the history of the fort and its relationship to WKU. Uh, for just future generations because time changes everything 
and it is certainly going to be changing this area even more. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to share these videos. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments below. Guys, thanks for watching as always, and we will see you next time.